Hello everybody, and a very warm welcome to LMT YouTube channel. This is how Prince Harry really feels about his new life in California. Though they had planned on being in the UK at some point this summer, the coronavirus, COVID-19, pandemic thwarted Prince Harry and Meghan, Duchess of Sussex's plans. Instead, the pair have been hunkering down in Meghan's native California as a family and focusing on their future endeavors. Since the couple has been working pretty much non-stop since they got engaged, this downtime has allowed them to bond as a family, help those reeling from the virus, learn more about the Black Lives Matter movement, and focus on future ventures. Since the Sussexes moved to Los Angeles in March 2020, staying for several months at Tyler Perry's Beverly Hills mansion, there has been a ton of speculation about how Prince Harry has been handling his new life in the U.S. Now he's revealing how he really feels about California. Prince Harry was not happy in the British royal family. When Prince Harry and Meghan announced they were leading the British royal family at the beginning of 2020, royal fans and experts were stunned. The royal couple had been open about the scrutiny and struggle they were facing in the press, but makes it seemed like a drastic step. However, it turns out that amid a rift with his brother Prince William and some struggles to find his role in the royal family, Prince Harry had been struggling with royal life before Meghan entered into the picture. An insider said, The truth is Harry had been unhappy for a long, long time. He wanted to move in the direction that they did and had been considering it for more than a year. Meghan supported Harry's decision. But there was more than one occasion where she asked him if he was certain it was what he wanted. And she always made it clear she would support him in whatever he did. The Sussexes moved to Santa Barbara because of Prince Harry. When Mexit was first announced, the Sussexes left the UK for Canada, which is where many people assumed they would settle down. Therefore, when they popped up in Los Angeles in March 2020, fans were puzzled. Though Hollywood is Meghan's hometown, this did not seem to be like the place for a low, key life. It appears that the Sussexes feel the same. Ultimately, they purchased their first home, a $14.7 million estate in Santa Barbara. A source said, Meghan visited Montecito in her teens and fell in love with the picturesque scenery and stunning architecture. Moving there was always an option, but to begin with, she and Harry wanted to give Los Angeles a shot. Unfortunately, Harry absolutely hated it. The timing was so wrong amid the coronavirus pandemic, and they lacked privacy. An added bonus is that Montecito is only just over an hour's drive from Los Angeles, which is where a majority of their work is based, yet far enough away to escape the crowds, paparazzi and tourism in Hollywood. Prince Harry really likes California. Despite being disgusted by Los Angeles, Prince Harry genuinely loves his new life, especially his new home in Montecito. Recently during a video call with the Rugby Football League, the Prince revealed his true feelings about California. He revealed, I am loving it. It's fantastic. What I need, is a few mini rugby balls that I can get Archie involved with the game. I've got a little bit of space outside which we're fortunate enough to have. We've got a whole Rugby League World Cup coming next year. I definitely plan on coming back. I would have been back already had it not been for COVID. It's exciting to see the Prince is doing so well. Retractions left, right and center as they should. We've woken up to news the New York Times put a correction notice under their recent article about the Sussexes. As we've stated numerous times, they are financially independent. They do not rely on anyone. Now, it's clearly confirmed with the New York Times retraction. Making great moves, the Sussexes have signed a landmark deal with Netflix to produce documentaries, feature films, scripted shows and children's programming. 
Their production company will operate independently from their charitable foundation, ArcaWell. This Netflix project is another great way for them to make a living. We Ray so proud of them. Harry and Meghan say, our focus will be on creating content that informs but also gives hope. As new parents, making inspirational family programming is also important to us. They added that Netflix's unprecedented reach will help us share impactful content that unlocks passion. Statement from Netflix about the new deal with Harry and Meghan. We're incredibly proud they have chosen Netflix as their creative home and are excited about telling stories with them that can help build resilience and increase understanding for audiences everywhere. Production isn't new to Harry. He has appeared in many documentaries, even before he met Meghan. In April 2019, it was announced that he was to partner with Oprah as executive producer and co-creators for an Apple TV Plus mental health series. And so on to other news and Meghan Markle was reportedly not okay being treated second best to Kate Middleton. Meghan, Duchess of Sussex, is laying low in California, working on her upcoming projects, including a reported deal with Disney. Her days as a senior member of the royal family are over, but fans are still interested in the details of her controversial exit, and exactly how and why everything turned so sour. Meghan's time in the royal family was marred by tabloid headlines, including a series of reported feuds between the Duchess and various members of the royal family. The most high-profile story, however, was the one claiming that Meghan didn't get along with her sister, in law, Catherine, Duchess of Cambridge. While some sources have stated that the feud never really existed in the first place, a new book details how Meghan actually felt about Kate and why she could still feel bitter toward Prince William's wife. Meghan Markle's issues with Prince Harry's family. Meghan officially joined the royal family in May 2018, when she married Britain's favorite royal, Prince Harry. However, it wasn't long before the negative headlines started in earnest, with multiple publications claiming that Meghan was demanding, difficult, and hard to be around. Several reports stated that Meghan rubbed everyone from Camilla Parker Bowles to Prince William the wrong way, and that she treated palace staffers like second-class citizens. Ultimately, however, it was Meghan's relationship with Kate that would ignite the public's imagination. Only a few months after Meghan married Prince Harry, tabloids started publishing stories that Meghan and Kate were embroiled in a feud. Some sources claim that the feud started at Meghan's wedding and that the two women clashed over bridesmaids dresses, but others stated that it was all due to Meghan's alleged treatment of palace staffers. The reported feud between Meghan Markle and Kate Middleton. As time went on, other news sources started reporting that the real feud was never between Meghan and Kate. Rather, outlets revealed that it was Prince William and Prince Harry that started having real issues after Prince Harry married Meghan. Prince Harry seemed to confirm the rumors in late 2019, when he admitted that they are on different paths. When it came to Meghan and Kate, most news outlets are now in agreement that the two women were simply too different to ever form a real connection. However, a new book has some new details about their relationship. And if these details are true, Meghan never had a chance at being friends with her sister-in-law. Meghan Markle wasn't willing to be treated as second best. A new book about the royal family, titled Kensington Palace, an intimate memoir from Queen Mary to Meghan Markle, includes a number of details about Meghan's time within the palace walls. Sources for the book have a lot to say about Meghan's relationship with Kate, claiming that Meghan felt resentment from the very beginning, and that she didn't want to be treated as the second best. Her feelings were compounded by the fact that her residence at Kensington Palace was much smaller than the one Kate lived in. Sources revealed that Meghan lost it on several occasions, and went so far as to raise her voice and stomp her feet 
when she felt as though she wasn't being given the same level of attention that Kate received. As one source claimed, Megan enjoyed success in Hollywood and had established herself as an emerging figure, as an activist. All of that was the polar opposite of her life as a royal where people behave towards you according to where you are in the line of succession. She was never going to be satisfied as long as she felt she was second place to Catherine. Regardless of what exactly happened within the palace walls, Meghan is out on her own now, and on her own path, separate from that of the royal family. Check out one of our newest videos right here, plus even more LMT videos about your favorite stuff. For coming soon subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one. Stop.